And now it is a true privilege for us to welcome our next speaker, Dr. Martin Cooper, but he said that you can call him Marty. Um, he is the chairman and co-founder of Dyna and executive chairman and co-founder of Arraycom. And Dyna is based here in Del Mar and Arraycom is based in San Jose. He has been involved in every major wireless technology in the last 50 years and he's uh, the, the awardee of numerous awards from science academies and more. But probably the most important thing that he is known for is that he conceived the first cellular telephone in 1973. So would you please welcome Dr. Marty Cooper. Well, I'm not sure why uh, all of you are here, because those of you that are uh, in Del Mar uh, can hear uh, everything that I have to say just by walking alongside me as I run down the beach in the morning. And, uh, and those of you that are not in Del Mar uh, must have heard Morley Safer say everything else that I can say a couple of weeks ago, but I'll try uh, anyway. I wanna talk to you uh, today about uh, a revolution uh, a revolution that my colleagues uh, at Motorola and I started some uh, 37 years ago. Uh, and that revolution was based upon one fundamental principle, and that is that people are inherently, naturally mobile. They want to be able to move around freely, not be inhibited, and yet for over 100 years, if they wanted to communicate to another person, they had to be wired to their desk leashed to their home, trapped. And along came uh, Bell Laboratories, AT&T, the largest company in the world, and they invented a new concept called cellular telephone. And this was wonderful. This was going to set us free. Except that AT&T announced two interesting things. Now, first of all, they said there's nobody in the world uh, capable of uh, executing on this new technology other than AT&T, so we're going to have a monopoly. Uh, and the second thing that they said was, uh, the way we're going to set people free is we're going to have, brace yourselves, everybody, car telephones. Now, is that an improvement? You were trapped in your office, in your home, now you're trapped in your car. And I was, in contrast with this biggest company in the world, I was with a little company in Chicago called uh, Motorola, uh, and first of all, we were not crazy about the idea of uh, AT&T being a monopoly because it probably would have put us out of business. Uh, but the main thing is that we had learned about this issue of mobility, that people have to be free to be everywhere. And we knew that technology was available. Uh, and we were desperate to stop AT&T uh, because we knew that the FCC at some point was going to allocate all these radio frequencies, which you need to do cellular telephony. Uh, and so we created the world's first cellular phone. And I think you've all seen this phone one way or another. <laughs> I mean, it is portable and you really can talk. Not very long, uh, it only had a battery life of 20 minutes, but that was very fortunate because you couldn't hold it up for more than 20 minutes. <laughs> Uh, and there really was a revolution. All of your lives have been changed. There may be one or two Luddites in, in this room who don't use a cell phone, but they're getting all the benefits of the productivity that uh, all of us uh, are. All of your lives are all of your lives are one or two are one or two are. And uh, some years after the cell phone was created, we announced, we technologists, there'd be a second revolution. Because now we have the internet we have the capability of putting data on this cellular telephone network, and the merge of cellular telephony and the internet was going to cause the second revolution, which was not only going to improve our productivity, but it was going to educate us, entertain us, introduce social uh, networking, make us safer. And something didn't happen. We're still waiting for this second revolution, and that's what I want to talk to you about uh, today. Yes, it, it is true uh, that uh, 
we do have social networking. I'm on Twitter. Anybody wants to follow me, you can do that. I'm uh, Marty Mobile. I'm on Facebook. I have the biggest idea what Twitter and Facebook are all about, but I'm going to learn. And my 3,000 followers are going to teach me, I, I think. I think I'm the only person on Twitter. By how many people here are on Twitter? Quite a few. Interesting. My impression is, I, watch it, I'm not an expert. I've only been on for six months or so. But I take my 3,000 followers very seriously, and I really try to say intelligent things when I, <laughs> when I tweet. And I think I'm the only one on the, in the Twitter uh, community that does that. Everybody has these inane things. At any rate, <laughs> uh, at any rate, uh, there are some uh, four and a half billion cell phones in use today, uh, and of that total, a few hundred million are smartphones, and the smartphones really don't do anything very interesting. Yes, they do email, and well, now we can get our emails uh, an hour sooner than we would if we waited till we got to our office. And there's a lot of texting, but we had texting in the days of pagers. Do everybody remember radio pagers? Well, that was texting. And yet there's so much that can be done. And, and let me give you some examples. Uh, for, uh, first of all, uh, you've already seen that the CD is disappearing. I mean, why would anybody want to go buy a, a plastic, a, a, a piece of plastic in a cardboard box uh, when they could, when they wanted to listen to something, wherever they were, uh, just download it and listen. And that's starting to happen now. So there, there, there will be no CDs in the future. Uh, and the DVD is starting to disappear, and the credit card is going to disappear. Now, if you're going to carry this device that is essentially your identity, why not have it be your credit card uh, as well? But the biggest thing that's going to happen in the future as a result of the fact that all of you are now wired into the network is the effect on health care. And I want to give you some examples of that. Why is that so important? I don't know if you're aware of the fact that almost 20% of our gross national product goes into healthcare in one form or another, and almost all of that is curing disease. And yet we have the capability, if you are connected to something, of preventing disease. And let me give you some examples. The simplest one is actually happening already, and that has to do with compliance. Uh, what is compliance? Well, I think you're all aware of it. Uh, you go to see the doctor, the doctor diagnoses you, he says, take these pills, be sure to take them for three weeks, because even though you feel better, you, you really need them for that full time. So you take them for a couple of days, you feel better, you stop taking the pills, uh, and three weeks later, you're back in a hospital, and who's paying for all this? Well, we all are, it all comes out of the healthcare system. So, what do we do to avoid that? We remind people. And there are all kinds of clever ways of doing that. Because everybody's got a cell phone, and we can call them uh, and, and uh, nag them, if you will. Uh, and sometime in the future, we're actually going to put uh, little uh, uh, wireless devices in every pill. And so the, we'll know without even their doing anything whether they've ingested the pill or not. That alone, just reminding people to take their pills is a multi-billion pro dollar problem solved in the United States. But we can do much, much more in interesting things. So I want to give you uh, a couple of other uh, examples. This patch is made by a company that's uh, local, actually just a couple of miles from here down on High Bluff Road called uh, Philomet Philometron. I think I got the name right. Uh, and this pill, uh, device can measure a whole bunch of different body functions. I'll give you one example. It can measure the amount of fluid in your body. Why is that important? Well, it turns out if you have, if you're about to have a heart failure, that is congestive heart failure, one of the things that happens is that you start building up fluid in your heart. And if we know that that's going to happen, you can pop a pill and avoid having a heart attack. Now, would, would it, if you were subject to that kind of thing, would you be willing to wear a patch like this every day that connects you with a computer somewhere and that just monitors 
You, and if you are going to have a tire attack, warns you, pop a pill, avoid perhaps death, but at a minimum, very costly stay. Now, there are some uh, more simple things. Uh, we can measure the number of calories that you ingest and the number of calories that you actually work off. And this little computer that you carry with you can remind you all the time, well, I think you're ingesting a little more than you're working <laughs> off. It, why don't you skip that dessert? Sound like a minor thing? Huge, huge social problem, a medical problem, uh, and once again, savings of many billions of dollars. Diabetes. Instead of checking your blood uh, and making a measurement and sending it to your doctor every several hours, uh, we can measure this continuously and pump insulin into your body as you need it at exactly uh, the right time. Uh, the, uh, the, we can measure your uh, a whole bunch of things like your obvious ones, your blood pressure, your skin temperature, uh, your pulse rate, uh, and from this information, we can identify things that are going to happen to you before they happen. Huge, huge change in the whole concept of uh, healthcare, and we're now talking about avoiding disease uh, instead of uh, curing it. So why can't we do these things? Why didn't it happen sooner? Well, now we get into the technical part of, of this uh, discussion. There are actually three problems. The biggest problem has to do with the networks. The cellular network, I think you're all aware of, of how cellular works. You could look around. Actually, you can't look around Del Mar very much because the uh, zoning commission has been very effective. But there are antennas, cell sites, on uh, various uh, buildings uh, in this area. Uh, and those cell sites are all uh, established by operators. Uh, and they have to get a return on a huge investment. Their investment is many, many hundreds of billions of dollars, literally, uh, in the US. Uh, and their way of getting this investment is to serve the existing marketplace. And we all know what that is. It's mostly talking, notwithstanding all the hype about data and Twitter and all these things. 80% uh, of the traffic on our cellular networks is still talking. And a huge percentage of the rest of it uh, is texting. And a little bit is, is all of this new data that's being uh, hyped. But the cellular operators do control this. They control the content. They control the pricing. Uh, and until that changes, we're not going to be able to do these new kinds of things. That change has started to happen. You are now starting to see, uh, if you've got an iPhone or a, an Android, uh, you know that you can buy applications. Unfortunately. You know, only those applications that are approved by Apple in one case, uh, uh, perhaps Google in the other case, and the operator always, you know, only those things are things that you can access. We have to be able to have applications that will take a tiny amount of data, you know, measuring your blood pressure uh, and your skin temperature and those kinds of things takes very little data and you can't afford very much. So uh, the operators have to learn that these kinds of things can make money for them, uh, and they have to open up their networks. The operators should act as a conduit for information and let entrepreneurs, companies like Phil and Matron, come up with services that help save our lives uh, and, uh, uh, and have the freedom to do that. So that's one problem. Opening up a network's starting to happen now. Second problem is the cost of service, uh, because notwithstanding there are a lot of people that you know that have smartphones. Smartphones are very expensive. Uh, the the uh, smartphone service costs somewhere in the range of uh, 50 or $60. You have to pay an additional 30 or $40 for the uh, voice part of it. They're far too expensive. What's going to solve that problem? A technology. And there are a whole bunch of new technologies that are uh, have been evolving and that will start appearing in a uh, generation that we call the fourth generation. You may have heard of things like WiMAX and uh, LTE. And that generation will incorporate a new technology called smart antennas, which I've spent the last 17 years of my life trying to persuade people uh, they're going to need. And finally, they figured it out. What made them figure it out? Uh, the iPhone. 
did. People started, they bought, AT&T put out the iPhone, people started to download movies, and all of a sudden AT&T's network was brought to its knees, and they suddenly realized they need this technology and then I told them they needed 17 years ago, but nobody ever listens to me. <laughs> so, so uh, and what do smart antennas do? Uh, just exactly what the name says. Instead of having a single antenna, and you've seen these antennas on cell sites, uh, wherever you go, and these cell, uh, antennas radiate in all directions, and yet when they radiate, they're really, that energy is intended to go to one person, to the antenna on your cell phone, and all the rest of this stuff is wasted. And then when you talk back, you would like this cell site to listen to you, but instead it listens in all directions. And these smart antennas are so smart that, that when you start your conversation, they'll beam in on you and listen only to you and reject your conversation and your conversation. And then when the, cell phone, the station talks back to you, when the cell site talks back to you, it aims right at you and it avoids talking to other people. And what this does is let a lot more people talk on every radio channel and from every station and the cost goes down proportionately. So that, that's gonna happen. And it's gonna take five years, six, seven years, nothing happens quickly. So that's the second problem. First problem is open network, second problem uh, is the cost. And the third problem is the whole concept of what do we call a handset. Everybody, when you think about cellular, you think about the handset, and everybody knows that a handset has to have, you know what it has to have. Uh, it's got to have uh, an MP3 player, a camera, uh, internet access, uh, perhaps a uh, TV receiver, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. and. Not all of us use all of these things. And the result is that we have an extraordinarily complex device. And what is my rule? If you try to build a device that does all things for all people, not gonna do any of them very well. And it's my opinion, not everybody agrees with me, you know, that uh, cell phones are in that category. They're really not excellent phones. And they're not excellent cameras by any stretch of the imagination not the best way to get on the internet. What's the right answer? Well, think about when you go to buy a car. You can design a car to your exact requirements. You can pick the size, the color, the amount of power in the engine, you know, the styling. I mean, you can, you can probably design a car that's unique and nobody else in the, in the world has. Now you go to buy a cell phone, and every cell phone's got a camera, MP3 player all. Uh, it's a result of having an immature industry. And what's the characteristic of something that that's complicated and has all that stuff? Well, it is that the instruction manual for a telephone, like for my uh, new Motorola Droid, which is a, an excellent phone, but the instruction manual is bigger and heavier than this phone. So uh, at some point, we are going to get to the point where you can have a device that does whatever you want it to do. And you're not gonna have one device that does everything. You're gonna have multiple devices. You're gonna have a patch. It's gonna be much simpler than this. Your telephone, people laugh at me, but they've been laughing at me my whole life and I ignore them because they're all wrong and I'm right. Uh, <laughs> at some point, uh, that the telephone part of your cellular thing is gonna be uh, embedded in, in the skin behind your ear. And why do you, would you ever do that? Well, what's the biggest problem with cell phones now? Anybody want to take a guess? And, and somebody said the, the battery. Well, that's it. You have to remember to charge the thing. And here you are walking around with uh, uh, being actually a power supply. That is what, I hate to minimize your self-opinion, uh, but what you do is ingest food and that food turns into energy, and maybe we could tap a little of that energy and drive the cell phone. Uh, and we have computers that will appear uh, uh, in the very coming years that are smart enough so that when you talk to them, they can do all of the interface. No more pushing buttons. You, you just tell the computer, uh, I want to talk to Joe. 
well, which Joe do you want to talk to? You know, uh, this is the computer talking back. And, and uh, I say, well, Joe Weiss. And the next thing you know, there I am uh, talking to Joe, and I haven't uh, done anything that I wouldn't do very intuitively. And you'll have a medical device on you, and you'll have a camera, and the camera will take really good pictures, and when you take the picture, you push a button, and when you push a second button, the picture will go to wherever you want it to go. My son will take a picture of my granddaughter, and I'll be sitting watching television, and bingo, that picture will appear uh, on my TV screen. That's an optimum camera. So all of that is going to happen, and what's the issue? The issue is choice. You are entitled to have exactly what you want, and you're different from everybody else. So you ought to have, be able to tailor the device, the devices that you carry, uh, and uh, make it serve you. So that's my picture uh, of the future. The uh, combination of the internet uh, and cellular technology is, in fact, going to continue to increase our productivity. It's going to uh, educate us, entertain us, and make us safer. It's already revolutionized social network working in ways that I don't understand, but others do. Uh, and most of all, it is going to revolution revolutionize our uh, healthcare system. And when it all happens, you're going to remember that I told you about it. Thank you very much. <laughs>